So, <clears throat> yesterday, you guys. All right, let's wrap up our conversations, please. Yesterday, you guys worked on some problems right, on your A12. Um, tomorrow, you guys have a quiz over A11 and A12. And then today, we're going to go over A13. Yes? I'm not going to be here tomorrow. That's fine. You can do a makeup. Okay. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to be able to join the Zoom either. No, that's fine. Yep. Okay. Yep. We'll get it set up. Yeah. You just, uh, we'll just make up a day for you to come in at 1.30 after school from okay. 1.30 and then do it. Yep, yep, no problem. All right. Did you guys have any questions on yesterday's homework? All right. All right. So today for our A... One, three. We're still going to be looking at those bouncy balls that we were trying to bounce. And we're going to see if there's a pattern that we can find out. you guys excuse me thank you so I know yesterday when we were uh, or when you guys watched the video um, they were talking about that rebound ratio so ultimately we sat there and uh, made a fake experiment right or a demonstration bounced the ball we measured the height um, put together the little table or the little graph and the table and then through there we were able to come up with a rebound ratio, correct? Okay. And you guys went through to start with, right? They gave you guys all those bouncinesses, bounciness. And you guys were able to come up with that rebound ratio where you took how high you dropped it and then that rebound is how high up it comes from that entire height that it was dropped. So when we did it with our bouncy ball, right, we came up with these different heights and we ended up coming up with a ratio. What was our ratio that we came up with? Maybe we need to put our cell phones away so we can pay attention to the lesson. Thank you. So that rebound ratio was that change in the y over the change in x or our slope in which we get three fourths. Right? So we know that our rebound ratio from yesterday was three fourths. So what's going to happen if we take a bouncy ball? You're a big person. Mm -hmm. Not an artist at all. I'll be the first to admit that one, right? And we stand on a ladder. I don't know how to do this. And we take that ball and we bounce it. Here's our ground. What's going to happen with our ball? It's going to drop. And it's going to hit the ground. And what's it going to do? It comes back up, right? And then what's it going to do? It's going to go back down, right? And then what's it going to do? Go back up. Is it ever going to go back up to the height that it was? No, it's going to keep getting like smaller and smaller, right? It's going to go back up, come back down, go back up, right? And then eventually it's just going to sit on the ground, right? Do you think you could figure out all of those heights? No. So let's say that we dropped it from 200 centimeters. Okay. It's kind of small, isn't it? Can you guys read it? Yeah. 
I get a distorted view on this side, right? So we were at 200 centimeters when we dropped it. How high do you think it's going to bounce back up to this point? How many, how many centimeters do you think it's going to be? One fifty. Anybody got a mathematical way of figuring it out? Maybe. Yeah, it comes back like three fourths, right? So if we took our original height and we times it by three fourths. From yesterday. Remember when I said yesterday, and I just talked about when you guys did this. I went through this lesson yesterday, and we came up with a height of three fourths, the change in y over the change in x. Yeah. That's where the three fourths came from. Yep. So, so we're gonna continue. Gonna be three Pardon me. Is it always gonna be three fourths? For our ball, but remember that ratio was different depending on what size ball or what if it was a tennis ball, right? It was 11 over 200. Or sorry, 111 over 200. If it was a soccer ball, it was 120 over 200. I mean, you could reduce those, but. Or you have to find it out, right? We had to find it out in our problem. We went through these different starting heights and we bounced it, right? And then we graphed it. And then we were able to find out that slope. That slope was that um, ratio. All right. So how high did it go? Would that be 150 centimeters? No. Yes or no? no? Why is it not? How do you multiply fractions? Don't you multiply them like straight across? So wouldn't that be 600 over 4? What's 600 divided by 4? 150. I know, somebody did guess 150 to begin with. Oh, gotcha. What about on the next bounce? What's our height of our ball going to be? 100? Well, how do we do the math to find it out? Times three fourths. Yep. So, what do we get if we do that math? One hundred twelve point five. Thank you. Centimeters. Right. What about on the next bounce? Yeah, so 112.5 times 3 fourths, running out of room here. What do I get if we do that? Yeah, so how about we go, like just 84.4, just going to the nearest tenth, right, centimeters. Then could you figure it out for the next bounce? And the next bounce? And then eventually what's going to happen? It's going to stop. And what's going to ultimately happen, though, is uh, it's not going to, like, mathematically, because it's always decreasing by three-fourths. And if you keep cutting something by 75%, are you ever going to get to zero, like zero, zero across the board? No, because you're always leaving a quarter of it, right? So technically, mathematically, it would ultimately be saying that it would constantly be bouncing. It would just be bouncing at smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller increments. But we know ultimately the ball's going to stop bouncing, right? So, all right. See if you guys can figure out how many bounces you think until it stops. Right. So this here would have been one bounce, right? This here would have been two bounces, three bounces. We got four bounces. How many do you think it'll take? Six? 
Seven? Seven to completely stop. Seven to completely stop? Can you test your hypothesis for me? Right, but eventually, it's like I said, so like mathematically, it would never become zero because you're always leaving a quarter, right? Yeah. But yes, but in our theory, when it comes to bouncing the ball, when are we going to get to zero? You think it's seven? Nice, yeah. You guys want to try it? <laughs> no, right? So we were at what, 84.4? What's three fourths as a decimal? 0 0.75? Yep. So we can make it a little quicker. Sixty-three point three. We're gonna times that by point seven five. Forty-seven point five. Oh, this would have been what? Bounce five. All right. This would have been bounce six. Bounce seven. calculator boomed. All right. So I may take a few more than that, correct? Yes. All right. So today's little homework problems that you guys have, um, for problem 34, it has you actually looking at a table of information, and then you guys are going to try and come up with that rebound ratio. You're going to predict how many bounces you think it's going to make, or it's going to take in order for it to stop. And then there's just a couple other little questions that kind of go along with it, right? So pretty much kind of like what we were just doing. Um, 35, look back at the data from problem 18 um, and discuss the rebound ratio of an official tennis ball. Suppose you drop that tennis ball from an initial height of, of 10 feet. Um, how high would that first rebound be? 36, it has, we're going back to those systems of equations and solving them um, algebraically. And then try and throw them into the graphing calculator or into Desmos to see if your algebra and your graphing come out to be the same. And then 37, we're kind of looking at a table, seeing if we can make a prediction on how many stamps. 38, they give you three points and they want you to know if they're on the same line. Um, if they're on the same line, what do you know? What do you know about lines? Hmm. Think of their slopes, maybe. Um, 39 is another system of equations. Or, sorry, I let me rephrase that. Um, 39, they give you an equation, and they want you to be able to rewrite it in the y equals form, so that way you can graph it. So you're going to move some things around and do some algebra to get it into y equals. And then 40, there's a graph, and then off the graph, they want you to see if you can kind of come up with a line of best fit, and then if you can come up with an equation to that line, and then come up with an answer by looking at the graph and or the equation for a certain number Sound good? All right. And then I know you guys have gone back and looked at your homework for A1 and A2 for that quiz tomorrow. And you guys don't have any questions on any of those?